Hi, I'm Mark, this is my June review for Taurus Sunshine and Taurus Rising. This month we have a lot to deal with. We have the two major aspects of the year uh, becoming exact for the second time out of three and we have our first solar eclipse. Now on the first of the month uh, the Sun makes a conjunction with the North Node and this always happens around the time of the eclipse um, but it allows us to realign ourselves with our, with our true path. Now, this is happening in your second house, so there's things here to do with values and your money that you may need to realign with. Could be that you want to change the way you earn money or change something about your finances. And also the things you value. There may be some um, shifts in, uh, in, in how and what we value. Um, but you'll have the confidence to make changes because the sun makes a, a sextile aspect of Chiron. So this will build up your confidence, self-esteem and you'll be able to make these changes. On the second, we have the first of those two large aspects I was talking about um, becoming into tight orb and will exactly uh, meet on the 14th of June. Now this is the second time. The third time will happen on the 24th of December. So this is ongoing throughout the year and will carry on into next year as well. We have Uranus and its rebelliousness up against Saturn and its structure. This is where the loggerheads are happening. And they're both in fixed signs, so there's not a lot of give on either side. What we need is constructive, creative change. Um, the thing is with Uranus, it can prove to give uh, violent outbursts um, and Saturn with its limiting forces want to keep those quelled. We need them to work together. Now the key for this will be um, Chiron. Now Chiron's the other big aspect with Saturn that happens a bit later on in the month which we will talk about. That's the key to the unlocking of these two. Now um, there's a positive side to this. Um, in the past and as it's showing again now um, there's a huge change in the shift and status of, of women in the world. Um, last time this aspect came around was in the 1970s, um, at the time when Mrs Thatcher took the leadership of the Conservative Party in England and also then became uh, the first woman Prime Minister. And now when this aspect's happening again we have the first uh, female um, Vice President in the US and we also have um, recently uh, the first female jockey to win the Grand National in England. So the status of women will change with this aspect um, and this will be a very positive outcome of it. Now for you Taurus, um, Uranus in your first house, so there's a lot of perhaps unrest that's coming from within and, and you may have this feeling that you just want to change things and you want to rebel against things. Now Saturn for you is in the 10th house so there could be rebellion against authority figures or father figure um, or, or a big organisation or someone in public office that you, you just really don't agree with what they're saying or what they're doing. You really would like to um, voice your opinions on this. Um, so yes, there is a lot of unrest uh, within with this aspect, a lot of tension and it will be continuing um, on till the end of the year. There are some insights coming through this month and the first of those is on the second where Mars makes a, a positive aspect to the Black Moon Lilith in your first tower. So here you better see clearly um, what it is that you, you're probably getting uptight about. You'll be able to see what your motivations are and, and where you need to make some changes. So that's all good. On the third, um, Venus uh, moves into Cancer, which is your third house, and makes an aspect to Jupiter in the 11th. So this is a time when you'll feel like socialising, you'll want to be chatting and talking with friends, maybe catching up with friends that you haven't um, spoke to for a long, long time. Uh, the Sun makes a positive aspect on that day as well, and that's in your second house, so it's a good day to um, do things around finances, maybe do some paperwork or sort things out. Um, and make sure your finances are well organised. Um, then we have Mercury making a, a square aspect to Neptune. Now this isn't a good one because Mercury's already retrograde and, and Neptune will just put a fog around things. So you've got five days here where you just need to be very careful with communications, very careful with um, looking at paperwork and things. This is a, you can easily be conned or tricked during this type of, um, of aspect because your mind's not clearly 
focused on things. So just be wary of that and don't make any important decisions for these five days that this aspect is going through. We have a couple of oppositions for you to deal with. The first and the fourth is from Mars to Pluto. Now Mars is in your third house and it's in the sign of Cancer. So Mars is a little bit mixed up here because Mars is a physical doing planet. Um, but he's in the, the domain of Cancer, which is the emotional side. And he's also in the house of Mercury, which is the mental side. So Mars is really out of sorts in this position here. And he comes up against the strong, powerful um, sense of Pluto. So um, things could be a bit of a struggle for a few days here. They could, this could come out emotionally, this could come out mentally or physically, but some way there could be some kind of power struggle that you'll need to overcome. But it's not to be done alone. You need to get help if there is something um, to, that comes up now. Then the other one on the uh, sixth is an opposition between um, the Sun and Juno. This is across your financial houses. Um, Juno represents relationships, um, so there could be discussions needed um, or some discussions in, in with your partner about, about shared finances. And so these need to be sorted out. One of you needs to take the lead on this um, and you need to agree on who it should be. On the 7th of Pluto in action, again this time making a, a positive aspect to uh, the Black Moon Lilith in your first house. So now we need to look um, deeply at, at ourselves and our behaviour patterns and how we interact with other people. What are our relationships with other people like? Um, can we improve them? Are there any power issues that come up? And if so, we need to work on those. Then on the 8th, there's the, uh, the other second most important aspect of the year and this is the Chiron um, sextile Saturn. Now this is the key to understanding the uh, Saturn Uranus square. Chiron is a planetoid that orbits between um, Saturn and Uranus and he can be the bridge between the two and he can give us um, ideas for understanding the square and the challenging aspect between those two planets. He can help to um, heal and understand any grievances and to come up with a, a plan to balance the two energies um, nicely. Now this aspect becomes exact on the 24th of June and it will come again on the uh, end of November. On the 10th we have a solar eclipse new moon and uh, this is in Gemini, 19 degrees. So if you have any planets between 15 and 25 degrees in the mutable signs, that's uh, Sagittarius, Pisces and Virgo, as well as Gemini, then this one's going to be um, quite acutely felt by you. Now, this um, eclipse is part of the Saros 5 North series. This is the same series as the, the eclipse uh, last month, the lunar eclipse. Now, this brings hunches. This brings messages from the unconscious about your way forward. So if you get any of these, you must take notice of them. Now, there'll be a big influx of uh, energy around the second house, because this is in your second house, so finances will be activated. And this is a good time to organise and look at your finances, see how you can make them work or change them for the future, maybe make more money. Um, the other thing is about self-worth. What what, why are you valued? Who values you? Um, what do you value yourself? What do you put more store into? These are all things that can be looked at now and can be um, taken advantage of um, with this intense power in this, in this area. Gemini as well is uh, in rule of your second house so it's a good time to communicate, talk about things, to learn things and to maybe even change your direction slightly. We have two other aspects also on the 10th. Um, the first is a conjunction between Ceres and Uranus. This is in your first house. This will last for three days. This will give you some insights. This will heighten your intuition and your, and your ability to see things. Now, um, when these two come together, it's bringing up issues of, of freedom and, and nurturing. Now, you have to get these into balance. You can't be too nurturing. Uh, you have to allow people freedom. Same for you. You have to have freedom within your own life. So this is a good time to look at these. 
Um, the other aspect on that day is an aspect between uh, the Sun and Mercury. Now they come together in your second house. This is a good time again to discuss um, finances. And this is also connected to the North Node. So there could be things happening now that will um, affect your future journey. And these could be connected with, with communication and finances, with learning and with uh, your ability to understand and process information. On the 12th, Mars moves into your uh, fourth house and Leo. So he'll be in a fire sign again, so be a bit more um, energy about him. Um, and this is in your home area, so maybe that you want to do things, make changes or some um, decorations around the home. Also on that day, Venus makes two aspects. Uh, the first is to Chiron. This is a square. Chiron in your 12th house may bring up um, issues from the past, some fears of, of rejection or something to do with your your self-worth because Venus is in that second house. So uh, this could come up on that day. Also, the other aspect is to Uranus. Uranus in the first house. We've spoke about Uranus in that house before, the house of change. So you may want to make some changes to do with uh, how you relate and what you value most. Then on the Sunday the 13th, it uh, might be a day of rest because the sun makes a square to uh, Neptune. And this could bring you low in energy and you could feel a little bit out of sorts. So it's best to chill out, take a rest, and uh, just enjoy some pleasantries uh, with family or friends. On the 20th, Jupiter turns retrograde, um, but we can still work with this energy. And in the 11th house for you, um, it's concerning uh, trustworthiness. You need to develop trust with friends and associates and show wisdom when engaging in um, social activities with friends. There's a chance to uh, put that to the test straight away because on the next day, the 21st, um, there's an aspect between uh, Venus and Neptune. Neptune's in that 11th house. So this is a time when you can have some new creative ideas. Venus in the third house can bring them through your mind and then can put them into use with friends in a very creative way. On the 21st, the sun moves into Cancer and this is your third house. So things will change, emphasis changes to activities of the third house and communications. Um, this is boosted further on the 21st when uh, Mercury turns direct. So this will help the sun to uh, fulfill those third house activities. Then on the 23rd, there is an opposition between Venus and Pluto. And this stirs up um, incredibly strong, intense emotions. Now, um, there's power struggles as well that can come with this, so be warned. And this could be over your beliefs because um, Pluto's in your ninth house of beliefs. So there could be a struggle here um, with someone else um, or a group of people whereby you don't see eye to eye. On the 24th, the lens could focus things more on your beliefs as uh, there's a full moon in Capricorn and this is your ninth house again. Um, so again, they'll be under the spotlight and there may be challenges or tests your beliefs that you need to stand up to. Uh, the Formula of Capricorn is about success, about achieving, about getting things done. And the ninth house is about getting that freedom. You may have been spending a lot of time on mundane issues of recent, um, but now it's time to be a bit more adventurous, have some freedom. Um, and also we have an aspect with uh, uh, Venus and the Black Moon Lilith, so there could be new experiences coming your way, new people, new opportunities um, for you to explore. On the 25th, Neptune turns retrograde. Uh, Neptune's in your 11th house. So the, uh, the lesson to be learned here, or the challenge to take up, is to develop a constructive, um, beneficial social life. Not only for you to gain benefit, but also so your friends can gain benefit as well. Then the following day, Venus moves into Leo. Now Venus in Leo is all about uh, pride and passion. There's a bit more um, excitement about Venus when she's in this, this sign. This is in your fourth house. So as well, you may want to make your um, house a bit more of a, of a retreat. You may want to put effort uh, into creatively changing your environment so that it's much more pleasant for you to live in. 
To finish the month, Mars makes two aspects. The first, on the 27th, is a sextile to the North Node. Now here you'll be quite ambitious. You want to get things done. You want to make changes. Uh, now, Mars is in your fourth house of the home. Uh, the Moon's node is in the second house of finance. So there may be things you want to do around the home that will involve expenditure and you need to plan these and you need to uh, include other people for guidance um, so that everything will work out well. Because you need that balance at this time and things will go forward well then. Then on the 30th, the last day of June, we have an uh, uh, extraordinary event here because Mars makes an opposition to Saturn but he plugs into the uh, Uranus-Saturn um, square which we talked about earlier. Um, so this adds another dimension for a, a few days when Mars is in this position. Um, and this can cause a lot of um, irritability, a lot of strain and tension um, with Mars because Mars is in the fire sign so it's going to add that um, uh, intensity to it that will um, cause sparks to fly if we're not if we're not careful. And Mars in that fourth house is the home, so you need to be wary that there could be issues that come up around the home area. But we need to look, when, when there's a T-square formed, we need to look at the, the empty segment of the cross, which would be uh, Scorpio. And that's sometimes where you can um, ease things. And Scorpio is your seventh house, so again, you need to involve other people, get guidance, get someone else to help shed a light on things so that you keep the balance and that you turn the uh, challenging aspect of the T-square into, into a grand cross of dynamic energy. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to leave me a comment, I'll be glad to hear from you.